Hi, this is The Greatest Story Ever Played, I'm Dan, and today I'm going to be talking about Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. A quick description for this game is an Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. It's up to you to build a fun campsite for you and your friends to enjoy. Stay tuned for all kinds of special events featuring some of your favorite animals. Background on the game, it's developed by IndieCube, who are known for the Wii Party game, as well as uh, several of the newer Mario Party games, in conjunction with Nintendo EPD, who made uh, the newest Mario Kart, Zelda's Breath of the Wild, uh, they're working on the newest Animal Crossing game that's going to come out on Switch in 2020, so those two made this game together. Now for the recap... As this game uh, doesn't particularly have a story, but is much more of a simulation building style game, instead I will kind of describe how the game is played and talk about my experience with it. As stated in the description, you run a campsite and you have two main goals. One, to attract visitors to make the campsite popular, and then secondly, to add amenities to make the campsite cooler, look nicer, look better, have stuff that you really enjoy at it. And really, at its heart, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp is a resource game. You add resources, you trade them, and you build with them. So, I guess descriptions of how each of those go. The first thing you do is resource gathering. There are four locations, really, that you can visit inside Pocket Camp. One is an orchard where you gather fruit. At this one, you go up to trees and you shake them and the fruit falls down and you pick it up. Uh, then you can also go to the beach. And at the beach, you can go fishing and you can gather shells there. Then there is an island where you can catch bugs. You've got like a butterfly net, and so you can just catch bugs with it. And then lastly, there's a river. At the river, you can both fish, but then there's also some trees there with fruit, so you can also gather fruit there. So that's uh, gathering. Next up, we have what's essentially the trading resources part, which is you do request of your animal friends, and that gets you resources. So what might happen is an animal will say, oh, I want uh, two apples and an orange. And if you give it to them, they may give you, you know, 500 bells, three pieces of wood, one piece of steel, or a piece of wool, things like that. So it's, it's basically a trading function, because any time an animal asks you for something and you give it to them, then you get a reward of some kind. So basically trading. And then lastly, you build amenities. And you build uh, these. So this would be something like if you built a chair or a table or like a guitar amp, that sort of thing. And when you build, you're using the resources that you get from the animals that you essentially trade with. So you can't build anything with fruit or fish or you know, whatever like that. Instead, you build it with like wood, steel, wool, that sort of stuff. So, yeah, there's basic items that you build. You can also choose to upgrade your tent. Um, as your tents become nicer, there are certain privileges that come with that. Like, um, some, some tents will allow the animal's uh, friendship level max to be higher. So, all animals, like, normal friendship max starts at, like, 7 or 10. And you can upgrade your tent to where it's like, oh, this kind of animal can go up to a 15 or different things like that. So, and in building, there's a pretty big range, actually, in how long things can take to be built. Uh, the range I've seen so far in playing is from one minute on the shortest end to 48 hours on the longest. Um, so, for example, upgrading your tent, that could be more of a 48-hour thing, but building a chair, that might take an hour. And there's a lot of other things that are in between where it's like, oh, this takes two hours, this takes four, this takes 12, um, that sort of deal. So those are kind of your three main ways resources move in the game. Now, I guess moving on to the animals involved in the game. So four animals visit your area every four hours. So, you know, one at the orchard, one at the river, one at the island, one at the beach. And when they're there, you can actually only trade with them a couple times, maybe three or four. 
and when you trade with them you you do those trades and then that's it so you can't like a uh, trade apples endlessly with one one specific animal and i guess for that matter uh you can't gather fruit endlessly either when you like shake the tree and the apples fall down um it takes three hours before apples will grow on the tree again or um I think with catching bugs and fishing, I think you would if you just overfish, then there wouldn't be fish in there anymore, and you'd have to come back in a few hours. Same thing. You don't get the timer the same way, but I think it works the same way. And with trading, you of course you do get resources, like I said, but what this also does is it raises your friendship level with the animal. So you yourself have a friendship meter that goes up, and you know you start off as a level one friend and you work your way up but your animals also have a, like a level one relationship with you when you first meet them but as you become their friend they move up the uh friendship meter and as both of you move up on there there are different either rewards you get or um you know different stuff like that that goes on also you can have up to eight animals at your campsite at a time now, the advantage of having an animal at your campsite is, of course, they're always there. Meaning you could have, like, multiple conversations with them potentially in a day. You could uh, do multiple errands for them. They may uh, give you resources multiple times in a day. What's really great about this is it, it can allow eight animals to level up significantly faster than if it was when they were visiting. Because, so, when they visit, for visit, and they're there for a few hours, and then they leave maybe three hours later and then show up at some other random time. And depending on how big your pool of animals is, it might be a while before they show up. So having the eight that are there, that's big. You can move their friendship levels up and then um, do that. And you can replace the animals at any point. So if uh, you like max out an animal at your camp, you can send them out and invite someone else in to level them up sort of thing. Uh, and to be able to invite an animal to your camp, you do need to have kind of certain criteria on met. Most of the time it's, oh, I like these four or five pieces and you need to have them. So like you need to have a blue table and a blue couch and a blue chair, um, and a blue lamp. And if you have all of those, then I will, I want to come over kind of thing. So th that, that's kind of how it works. Um, it's a game, so, you know, whatever, it doesn't really matter. This was a part, though, that I did have a little bit less time buying into. I, I think if you're trying to build the best campsite, and so you're, like, trying to draw consumers, I think that that's fine, um, but it, it, it felt like it kind of toes the line of, like, are you trying to draw friends or draw consumers, and, uh, I mean, if you need me to have a blue uh, living room set to be my friend, I'm not sure I want to be your friend kind of thing. Like, <laughs> So that part rubs me a little wrong, but I, I think that's probably more of a me thing than a pocket camp thing or an Animal Crossing thing. I don't think that's really their fault. But that's uh, a side tangent in itself. It's part of the game. It's fine. Um, it makes sense within the world, I would say, but as a message, you know, whatever. Anyways, uh, with the animals, there are lots of types that they have. This, it, I, I would say in similarity to like Pokemon, how there's like fire Pokemon or ghost Pokemon or water Pokemon or whatever. Um, these animals have their own types too. Um, they don't have special abilities, but it does reflect what they prefer. So there's like natural type animals who, I, I think these ones would prefer natural camping. So it's like, oh, we want, um, you know, to eat by a campfire and like different things like that. And then you've got other animals that are into the cute aesthetic. So uh, like they, one of the things is like their upgraded version of a tent is like a pink castle that they're into or a sporty animal or a cool animal. I, I forget which one, but one of them wanted like a half pipe skating rink like in at the campsite. And they're like, oh, that this campsite would be the best if you could skateboard at it. So they each have kind of the things they like. And as you upgrade uh, your campsite, it can reflect what they like. What I found was choosing a couple types I was more into and then just inviting a lot of them to my campsite. So for me, I think I ended up going with natural, cool, and 
cute, I think, were the three that I mainly juggled. And so those were the ones who I kind of built my campsite the most for, so I could try to level up those friendships. And I, I think near the end of playing, like, I probably had three natural and three cute animals at my campsite itself, like, at a time. And I had a couple other that I'd leveled up enough that I had to kind of kick out so I could level others up. But my uh, pool of friends in those classes, so to speak, got pretty deep. So you've got that. Um, for me, I had a couple favorites of animals I met. Uh, one of my favorites is Goldie, who is a golden retriever. She is the first animal I invited to the campsite. I forget if she's the default first one. Um, I'm not sure, but she was my first one. And I liked Goldie. Uh, Goldie, when I first met Goldie, they said, oh, today's so great. I was sitting in the sun reading and then I fell asleep. Uh, and I like, lost my book and like different things like that. And I'm like, all right, you're my kind of person. Like you like reading, you like being in the sun, like different stuff like that. So Goldie appealed to me right away. And so as I played, Goldie was kind of my main. It was like, okay, I've got, you're, you're like my favorite animal at the campsite. I'm not going to kick you out ever. I'll, you know, I'll kick other ones out um, to level that, you know, if people need leveled up or something. But Goldie, you, you get to stay. My next favorite animal was Filbert, who is a blue a squirrel, maybe? I'm not sure, but Filbert is very cute looking. I liked Filbert for sure. Uh, and was nice and fun. Also, I think Filbert and Goldie were both natural type, so that also helped out as that was kind of what I was building towards. Uh, another uh, of my favorites was named Blue Bear, who was that, was a bear that was blue, looked kind of like Filbert. Similar reason, I, I like Blue Bear. Blue Bear was also cute, so that was a fun animal to have on uh, Pocket Camp. This wasn't one of my favorites, but there was an animal I met who was an alligator who was named Boots, uh, which I, I felt was kind of mean. It was a funny joke, but um, a little mean. You're like, uh, get owned, Boots. Um, so you meet a lot of others. Uh, I think it was the sporty type I didn't like as much because uh, they all called me like Bucko. Uh, so I was not as into that. Some of the vernacular, some of them have is a little annoying. One of them, I forget which one it is, but one of them, they're like, oh, the only uh, hip words I know are cool and rad. Something like that. So, um, you know, it is a kid's game. And so there are, are things like that. Um, and the characters, I would say, have some differences. But as the game went on, uh, the certain types, some of them blended together. Once you were after your first couple animals, you'd meet of a type. Some of them felt a little blended together for me. Then it would be like, oh, do I like how they look or something like that. So those are the animals. And I, I, I guess too, for context, I've maybe played this game about a month and I mostly played it on breaks at work. I did play some at home, but uh, I, th I think this was a game that I probably played on average, maybe like a half hour a day for a chunk of time, you know, most of the month, most days, kind of thing like that. Um, and so what's nice is that it kind of lets you check in, do some stuff, and then can kind of move on. So I did, I did like that in itself. I guess moving to more general thoughts on the game. Uh, the game does have microtransactions in it, uh, but you can play the game without using them. It's just a bit slower. So in the game, I mentioned there's bells. Um, bells are Animal Crossing money, which that's specifically used in building resources to make your campsite better. But then they also have something that, I think it's called bucks maybe, but this is where actual money could be used. But also the game starts you off with maybe like 500 bucks in itself. And then as you like do different things, you can earn bucks in the game and what you can use with these is to like make something go faster so like if you don't have enough resources to build a thing you could you know use five bucks to you know this thing costs 35 steel and i only have 30 steel well use five bucks and that will cover your resources that that kind of thing or you can use it to make something go faster so as i mentioned like my tent 
uh, that could take 48 hours. You could, you know, put 50 bucks in and your tent will be ready now or something like that. Uh, for me, uh, as you probably would think, I hate microtransactions. I think they're bad. I don't get involved in them at all. I want no part. So in this game, I did use the some of the money that they gave me, but really only a little bit of it even. Like, I didn't want to mess with it, but there was a time or two where it was like, ugh, I'm three wool short or something like that. So I'd use the three bucks or whatever to do it. So you, you yeah, you don't need to, but I could see how someone could get into it, but I think that's a danger to be aware of if you don't want to sink money into this. Also, uh, I thought this was a very good, relaxing game. And I'm making the assumption that the base game, the regular version of Animal Crossing, is like this. And I can see very much so why it appeals to so many people. In uh, my understanding of like how Stardew Valley is, or other games like that. Just this nice, calm, resource, nice game kind of thing. Very relaxing. So, I, I can see why people like this. I think also this is pretty perfect for people who don't play games um, at all, or are just like new gamers who are getting into it. And just having this as a, a nice option is good. Uh, also, after playing this, my interest in buying a Switch has definitely gone up. I would really like to play a console version of Animal Crossing. I think that the Animal, the last Animal Crossing, I think it's called New Leaf. Uh, it's like a main console version, and I'm pretty sure that came out on Game Boy, or, or not Game Boy, uh, GameCube. So it's been a long time. So the Switch version coming out is a big deal, of course. But uh, to be able to play a base game, I'm I'm pretty intrigued by that. And so my interest in owning a Switch has definitely gone up from this game, which I would say in terms of mobile games, this is probably a huge win for Nintendo. I don't know how many people would be like me who want to switch more now because of this, but I suspect there probably are more, so that's pretty cool. That's cool, and I like this as a way to get to try a franchise I've never played. So that was cool. And then lastly is I decided to play this game after Jordan and Steph from Game Till 5 said that they like the Animal Crossing games. That made me want to check it out in the first place. With Jordan, uh, he'd mentioned playing Animal Crossing, I think on our Night in the Woods episode. And then, I think on a Patreon episode, uh, he talked about growing up playing Animal Crossing. And that he'd even play with his mom uh, when he was growing up, that she liked playing Animal Crossing as well. And they would even like fight over who could play. Like They both enjoyed it that much. Uh, and I, I can definitely see that. I, I really enjoyed Animal Crossing and felt the addiction you could have for it for sure but also like you know jordan's mom's not a gamer and she really liked this game so or the gamecube version or whatever so that, that's pretty cool like the animal crossing is that and then for steph uh when i went on to game till five we talked about five uh games that we would use to introduce people to gaming and steph brought up animal crossing as a game for that for her and, and this is, and actually on that podcast, that's where I found out about Pocket Camp. After talking to Jordan, I was intrigued by Animal Crossing and was like, okay, maybe I should get a Switch someday to try it out. But then Steph mentioned that there was the mobile version, Pocket Camp. And so because of that, I was like, cool, I'm going to try this out. I didn't, I didn't know that I even had access to try it out. And I totally agree what she said there. This is perfect for a new gamer. Uh, it's it's user friendly. It's fun. It's nice. Um, it's relaxing. Like I feel like this is a very nice, easy gateway into video games. So that's that's pretty cool. So thanks uh, to Steph and to Jordan for recommending this game. Um, and I uh, you know I think even just uh, on a side point of doing the podcast, I of course have found out about a lot of cool games from talking to people on Twitter and stuff like this. But it was fun in this one's instance to learn about a game while actually podcasting with people who I'm talking with on the mic, kind of thing. So that was pretty cool. So shout outs to them for recommending Animal Crossing uh, and leading me to Pocket Camp ultimately. And yeah, I guess that's all my thoughts on Pocket Camp. I would say 
try it out for sure if you're uh, uncertain about pocket uh, about um, Animal Crossing as a game. From what both of them have said, it seems like it's a um, a good light version, so to speak, of what the main games look like, and so it could be a way to tell is this kind of game for me or not. Um, but yeah, it's pretty light. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I guess wrapping up. If you want to talk to us, uh, you can talk to me on Twitter at Story Everpod. Uh, I post a lot about stuff, so feel free to come engage. Um, you can go to our website, thegreateststoryeverplayed.com, and find our backlog of episodes um, on there. Uh, if you'd like to support our podcast financially, you can do that on patreon.com slash thegreateststoryeverplayed. Um, and if you uh, give even $1 a month, um, then you will be part of our Patreon, and that's where those exclusive episodes are, like the uh, one I mentioned with Jordan talking about Animal Crossing. Uh, that's there, and some others are and will be in the future. So, yeah, we'd really appreciate that if you'd like to do that, though. Yeah, I guess that's the episode. Thanks uh, for your time, and uh, see you next time.